So here at Thrift Diving, you know there is no such thing as trash, because we can use it all, right? So several months ago, I took this old drafting table from the thrift store, removed the top, added some cool orange caster wheels, and people said, well, Serena, what are you gonna do with the, with the top? Well, we're gonna use it today. We're actually gonna build another table using the top, and we're gonna strip it down, seal the top, and build a body for it, about the same height as this table, and we are going to paint the body a beautiful blue paint from Beyond Paint. It's gonna look amazing. And we're gonna strip this and seal this. So stick with me because I'm gonna show you how I'm getting two tables for the price of one. So the first thing was to remove all of the nasty felt from the drafting table. It was in really bad condition, but I think with a little bit of refinishing, I knew that this could be beautiful. So I removed the back wood support pieces and then I used my orbital sander to just refinish the back. Typically you don't refinish the underside, but I really didn't want to leave all of this nasty old stain underneath of the table. At first I thought I'd use the orbital sander on the top, but just decided that I was going to switch to a chemical stripper. You really can do it either way, it just depends on your preference. So now we sit and wait for about 10 minutes, and then we come and scrape this stuff off and do a final sanding. You guys, stripping furniture is a nasty, nasty job. So if you don't have to do it, don't. You can use your orbital sander, but if you do use chemical stripper, make sure that you use an afterwash to clean up all of the residue. Once you clean off all of the residue, you still have to go over it with your orbital sander. So just go very slowly like you see me going here, and that will help to prevent the pigtails. That'll be those little swirly marks that tend to happen when you move too fast. So slow down and do your final sanding with a piece of 150 grit sandpaper by hand. Now I'm not sure why the drafting table had these little slots on the side, but I went ahead and filled that with wood filler. And when it dried, sanded it smooth so that when I put the stain on top, it would be less noticeable. And I also used some other sanding tools to sand out some of the other parts of the tabletop. Here's where things got really interesting. So on the back of the tabletop, I did a little test with some gel stain, and I love the way that it brought out this grain of the wood. Typically, you would use a preconditioner so that you don't have these dark and light spots, that it would be more of an even coat. But I liked it so much that I decided I'm not gonna use a preconditioner. I'm just going to go over the whole thing with the mahogany gel stain, and I love the look of the wood. So while the tabletop was drying, I used my miter saw to cut some two by fours. This is what I was going to use to make the legs of the table. And I probably should have doubled them up to make four by fours as I thought that I was going to do, but it just didn't turn out that way. And I decided I was just gonna go with the two by fours. So I marked it where I wanted it to be, did some pocket hole screws and figured out how to do some legs and aprons and just sort of threw it together and hoped that it would work. <laughs> The legs were a little wonky, but you know what? Doesn't have to be perfect. I used some pocket holes in order to secure the braces to the legs and then used wood filler in order to fill them up because when I paint this with Beyond Paint, I did not want that to show through. Okay, so we are two thirds of the way done this project. We essentially have two tables from one table from the thrift store, from one drafting table. It's a little wonky. Some of the parts go like this, but you know what? It looks great and we're gonna put some paint on it. And we also have these stools. So while we're waiting for the wood filler to dry, we're gonna go ahead and cut these stools down to size so that they can fit at this table. And then we will use our Beyond Paint to paint them a beautiful navy blue. So let's get started on the stools. <gasps> For this project, we're using the navy color by Beyond Paint, and you can find them at beyondpaint.com. And you can see that the paint is a lot thicker, but goes on really, really smooth. And I had a helper. Whenever you paint furniture, this one. Okay, but whenever you paint furniture, you have to wipe it down first. And I usually use simple green. Simple green. Okay, so now that we've cleaned the stool down, I'm going to let you get started with the roller, and you're going to paint nicely okay all right no making a mess mm -hmm. so easy even a I'll kid can do $2. it so just go like this and that's all you got to do is go like this 
The hard part of painting with kids is hoping that they don't make a mess, but I think that Kojo did a great job. I gave him the roller and I just let him have at it. And you can see here that he's painting on a stool that was sort of painted previously. So not only can you use Beyond Paint on a surface like this, but you can use it on wood, plastic, metal, masonry, and it doesn't require any sanding or priming. So this was a great opportunity for them to get involved and it was simple and easy. And while Kojo and Oheni were working on their stool, I was over on the other side of the driveway working on my stool. And it went very quickly and I was very pleased with the results. They turned out great. And the blue is amazing. I painted the bottom of the legs blue and then just used four screws to attach four caster wheels. Finally, it was time to paint and this is the part that I was super excited about because the color was fantastic. I'm using a roller here because Beyond Paint recommends that you use a roller. That way you don't get those brush stroke marks from using a paintbrush. Now there are times when you will use a paintbrush if you're smushing the paint into cracks and crevices or like I'm using the brush here to prevent it from getting on the table, which I didn't do a great job of, but you can also use painter's tape and prevent paint from getting on your table, but just have fun with it. This table was going into my kitchen, so I used the Beyond Paint multi-purpose sealer, and it's gonna look creamy and it's gonna look very cloudy, but as long as you don't overload your brush or your roller, it will go on cloudy, but it should dry clear, and it'll give you this nice matte protection, and that way you'll be able to use your table and it won't get ruined. So this is what the drafting table top looked like before. It was scratched up, it was beat up, but now it looks amazing with this beautiful stain and we built this body. Now it's a little wonky, but that color is amazing. And now my kids have a place to sit in the kitchen on beautiful stools and they can do their homework there too. So I'm happy. Okay, so we are done with this project. And like I said at the beginning of this video, we had one table and now we have two tables, all from one drafting table at the thrift store, which costs $40. And now we have two amazing tables. And now we can put this in the kitchen and you guys have a place to sit and eat in breakfast here. in the kitchen. And we can put our pencils in here. And you can put your pencils in there. So if you like this project, give it a thumbs up. Go back to my blog, thriftdiving.com for more projects. And remember, check out the awesome paint from Beyond Paint. And I will see you next project. And Give don't me forget to smash that like button. <laughs> smash that like button. Just go ahead, just go ahead and smash it. Smash it. <laughs> smash it.